For the last six or so weeks, we have been in the book of Acts, hearing about the Holy Spirit's work on the new church that it formed. And so we end this series uh, back at the beginning of Acts, which of course is where we hear the story of Pentecost. So please turn with me now, Acts 2, beginning at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my my spirit upon all flesh, And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Sometimes reading about Pentecost can make us feel inadequate. (laughs) Tell me later if this is just a personal problem, but I think it can make us feel a little inadequate when we read about how the first Christians were overcome by wind and fire and we wonder, where are our wonders? (laughs) Or when we see that they have been so powerfully touched by the Holy Spirit that they are able to speak in languages that span the globe and we wonder, where are our miracles? But the day of Pentecost is not about that. It is not about over-the-top miracles and wonders. Let's not make this a superhero adventure film just yet. This, This is about ordinary people gathered in an ordinary house on an ordinary day. They were not glamorous or powerful or special. Where the day of Pentecost comes is it was one of many holidays in the Jewish faith, and it was the one that was to celebrate the spring harvest. It's named Pentecost because it comes 50 days after the bigger and more important holiday of Passover, so Penta 50 days. This is the setting of ordinary folks getting together for a secondary holiday. There was very little that set it apart. It was simply quotidian. Quotidian. You know what that fancy word means? It's in your bulletins as well. Ooh, David says he knows. It just means every day. Ordinary, routine, quotidian. That's what the apostles were that day. They were ordinary, and they were going about their everyday lives, quotidian. 
And it's kind of nice to think about it that way, to be reminded of it that way, because most of our lives are pretty ordinary, pretty routine. We wake, we work, we eat, we laugh, we make lists. We lose the list. We get behind. We sleep. Then we wake and we do it all again. Like the apostles on that day in Jerusalem, most of life is routine. And if you have ever experienced this, there is perhaps nothing more in life that is more routine than being forced to attend an elementary school show. Have you ever found yourself in this forced situation? I mention it because I found myself in it just a couple of months ago. Uh, the show had once been called the Uper Lane Elementary Talent Show. And then the hosts of the show decided to become more honest, and they took out the word talent and called it variety. <laughs> variety show. And we all appreciated the honesty. And so there I sat on a hard seat in the school cafeteria wondering how long this was all going to last. The MCs excitedly announced that there were more acts than they'd ever had before, and it looked to be a grim evening. I settled in for quotidianness of the highest degree. You know what I mean. Those moments in life when it is all routine, ordinary, every day. I scanned the program after a couple of acts, uh, wondering what was coming next. And, and Walk It Out was the title of the next offering up on stage. I had no idea what it would involve, but I hoped it would move along quickly. We had 26 more to go. And then it happened. Some music blared, that, that heavy kind of pop music that has a big drum beat behind it, pulsing behind it. And this boy... Uh, he appeared to be in about fourth grade. He appeared on the edge of the stage, and he was all by himself, and he was struggling to walk. He would take one step tentatively, and then he took some more. And I looked back in the program, and right after that title of Walk It Out, this is what I read. The program read, he has been relearning how to walk. And the music blared, and the drum kept its beat, and that boy took each step, and the whole room had read what I had read. He has been relearning how to walk, and together the room held its breath. And the spirit and the day of Pentecost came. You know how I know it came. Do you know how I know that the Holy Spirit was blowing through that room and fire was alighting on that boy's head? I know because we all saw in him what had been his greatest weakness become his greatest strength. That's how I know. Because that is what happened at Pentecost. Do not let the description of wind and of fire distract you. That is not what happened at Pentecost. What happened at Pentecost is that the Holy Spirit took what was the apostles' greatest weaknesses, their greatest deficiencies, and it used them to make them strong. The last time we heard Peter's voice in the Gospel of Luke, same author, right, as the book of Acts, the last time we heard Peter's voice, he was lying through his teeth over the sound of a rooster crowing. That's the last time we heard his voice. But the day of Pentecost came, and he is preaching the good news of Jesus. When we heard at the end of Luke, Jesus promising that the Spirit would come for them, uh, he told it to friends who were on their way into hiding. Hiding from authorities, hiding from danger. But the day of Pentecost came. And those same timid people are tumbling out of the house and they are going up to strangers and telling them what God has done. When the Holy Spirit arrives, something is broken open, and God takes weaknesses and makes them into strengths. 
The only difference between that ordinary evening I spent in a school cafeteria and the ordinary morning that the apostles spent in that house in Jerusalem, the only difference is that I was not expecting the Spirit to show up. But they were. The apostles were. That, that's why they were still together in the city. And in the first chapter of Acts, Jesus has told them that the Spirit will come and that they are to stay and wait for it together. So they waited on that ordinary day. And they gathered in one place so that they would be together on that ordinary day. They did not do it because they were special or because the day was special. They did it because they had heard his promise. It's the same promise we have heard. And it makes me wonder, what weak place in you will the Holy Spirit use to be strong? What weak place in our congregation will the Holy Spirit use to make us strong? That's exactly what the Spirit will do. It is how the Holy Spirit works works. I titled this sermon, The Quotidian Mystery, and the mystery of it is that God only arrives in the Spirit on ordinary days. And the mystery of it is God only works through ordinary people, routine, every day. That's the message of Jesus in this world, that that God became flesh, that divinity took an ordinariness upon itself. Quotidian moments and quotidian people are the only kind he knows. When I remember that evening in the cafeteria when that whole crowd was holding its breath, I knew the day of Pentecost had come. Not just because of the strength the boy showed in his weakest spot, but because of the joy in that room. In Luke, in John, in Acts, we hear over and over again that when the Holy Spirit arrives, you know it's true because so does joy. (laughs) This is how they describe it. They say, my heart is glad. That's one way. And another, and my tongue rejoices. I am filled with with gladness. More than speaking foreign languages, more than singed hair, joy is the outward sign that the Holy Spirit has come. And there was joy in that room. There was utter joy on the boy's face, and and that joy infected the crowd. It raised them to their feet, and they shouted and whistled and clapped. It had taken most of the song for him to get to the, from the edge of the stage to the center. It had taken that long with his halting steps. But when he reached the center, um, he turned his body toward us fully and he raised his arms. And in that moment, we could all finally fully see the joy in his face, in his body, and in the T-shirt that he wore that said, Best day ever. When the day of Pentecost comes, it is not about fire or wind. When the day of Pentecost comes, it is about God's ability to make new creations out of really rough and weak stuff. Just as the divine wind moved over the chaos In the first creation, the Holy Spirit moves over our chaos and makes something strong. That's what we believe. That is what we trust God can and does do, that that the day of Pentecost comes to ordinary quotidian people on ordinary days and make something new and strong, even out of the weakest parts of us, even out of the weakest among us. 
That is the promise that we celebrate today, and I hope you can hear it too. Because it is that promise that makes this the best day ever. Amen.